My name's Aaron. Welcome back to my channel. How are you? I'm fantastic and I'm doing really well. And today I'm viewing Omani Code at a Toilette. This is £67 for 50ml, £82 for 75ml, £105 for 125ml, and £125 for 200ml. An iconic fragrance filled with captivating contrast. Omani Code at a Toilette is now encapsulated with a new statement bottle. The ambery woody fragrance never ceases to create a wood of seduction and sensory masculinity, reflecting the contemporary looking man. With sustainability at its heart, the Edge Toilette looks towards the future with sustainably sourced ingredients and its flagon, which is refillable and designed to last. Amani Code Edge Toilette opens with bright citrus notes that vibrate with sustainably sourced green mandarin from Italy. The super essence is extracted using molecular distillation process that recreates a refined note with fresh sparkling effects. The heart notes are lavender heart. The note is obtained by a steam distillation and fractulation method. This may be where I get mine from. I'm a little bit gobsmacked by this. And then torrified tonka bean. Tonka bean absolute and seeded with heart. Tonka bean absolute brings a warm central effect. Okay, do we have our bottles of Omani code at a toilet? Are we engaged with the higher self? Let's get testing. So they were talking about sustainably sourced and that, and they got a plastic cap. So, you know, and I've got, it sounds like I've got a broken record, but you know, think how many of these we throw away and think about the landfill. The, the reason I said that is I've got a new electric toothbrush that's made from recycled aluminium and recycled plastic, which I don't know why hasn't been done before. And the reason I got that was because I saw a picture of the amount of electric toothbrushes in a landfill and it absolutely shot me. And as well, the green bottle in the UK, what's that drink called Sprite or something, that they showed in a landfill and you could just see all those green bottles and you don't think about when you throw away one thing, plastic's really hard to recycle. I just would love this to go over to something which is a bit more recyclable. And if you're going on about sustainably sourced, then, you know, Anyway, let's look at this atomizer. Yeah, standard. I hope that makes sense about that. I'm not like an eco-warrior or anything, but you know, with my own personal business, we took all the cosmetics over to glass, which is, it can be a little bit problematic. We're talking about viscosity, so of the shampoo, you know, when it pumps out, you gotta let the pump come up because it's sort of thick. And in a, a squeezy one, it just comes out. So it's quite difficult to work with glass and all that sort of stuff. So we're trying to do it as a tiny company. I'd love to see bigger companies. Just, you know, if you're gonna go for it, really, really go for it. Don't go half-hearted with it. Anyway. It's got that bubblegum, clean sweetness. Clary Sage is kind of, I'm gonna be, Lisa's something with Clary Sage. And Clary Sage is a lovely raw material. It smells very, Clean and sweet. That's quite detectable in this with lavender. You can definitely smell the dihydrocanol. You can definitely smell the acetate. You can definitely smell the linalool. Linalool like compounds. Vibrant, woody, sweet, clean. There's a slight menthol note in it as well to give pop and cleanness to a formula. Wood raw materials helping to support this formula. It smells kind of what you would expect for, you know, this amount of money. Incredibly stable perfumery. When you're working, with these raw materials, you gotta be really, really accurate with what you're doing. Because raw materials like calone and the calone like raw materials, I think the feminist one's called calone or something. That's even stronger and that's powder. It can overpower our formulations. And I've smelt some fragrances where the calone has reacted. There was one, I can't remember what it was. It reacted with some raw materials and it gave me a really weird, sort of like sulfurous, weird smell. This is how to do Cologne correctly. So in my mind, this is a group of perfumers or a perfumer who's really working mathematically and methodically towards you know, a formula. Wood like raw materials and raw materials which are, can be used in tobacco accords as well and all that sort of stuff uh, being used in this to give sort of quite a masculine dense feel based upon Isu Super and Hedion, obviously. Methyl pampamoose having to give that sort of grapefruit, sort of lively feel. And methyl pampamoose mixed with dihydromersonol and acetates and all that gives you a really beautiful accord. It's like a fresh, with calone as well, a fresh man's fragrance, I would say. And to my final thoughts. I think this is very nice, actually. I, I think for an eau de toilette, I think it's very strong, radiant, clean, 
some salicylate molecules in there to give it sort of dryness, uh, citronella as well. You can sort of smell that sort of dry metallic note. Citronella is an amazing raw material, actually. Traditionally used within like floor fragrances, but it has so many uses and it can be used to give clean floor radiance. Even in a man's fragrance, you need, you, you need to have things balanced of wood notes, animal notes, floral notes, citrus notes, sweet notes. Uh, this has been sweetened with vanilla raw materials, so it has that sweet, clean radiance, which I think is so, so appealing. The demographic in this is all demographics. And the reason why I'm saying this is that I think it's been really well created to be a fragrance that would be something you'd wear to work, something that you would wear to go out, something. It's sort of like that signature thing. It does smell like a £60 fragrance. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It kind of smells like it would fit with other things that are like that. And I think that's very important. I, I don't know. I've been thinking, do I th do I know about these fractions and things? I don't know if I'm honest with you. It's quite difficult because when I started using my notes, I noticed the difference in my work. It elevated the work, but they are very, very expensive as compared to like stock essential oils and stock raw materials. You know, I'm thinking about the frankincense I've got, which is from these fractions. The ginger, I think was four times the price of stock ginger. Really, really expensive. So I don't know. I can't, I can't ask that. I can't surmise. Maybe if they buy it in huge sizes, they get it cheaper. I don't know, but I don't know how to answer that. But um, it's very interesting that it's written there, that it's sort of like um, being distilled and using this and using that. You know, well, I'm, I'm using all of them at the moment. And it's, I know that personally is because I'm the one that pays all the bills. It's very expensive and it was a decision I made personally to think I want my work to smell as beautiful as possible and, and to have that clarity and to have that next day's ev evolution in my work. When I decided, I mean, it was when you're talking about four times that amount of money when you're buying something in, you know, and you're going on a, a leap of faith like that, you're not doing it for, you've never seen me do the marketing of it, you hear me talking about it, but I never write about it. So it was a decision as an artist about, I want to use these raw materials to elevate my work because I can take it to that next level with it. And it works because my, my brand sort of, it was a definite jump, but that wasn't the reason why I did it. I did it because I wanted, I noticed that the clarity I got from it, that's personal, but I don't know whether it can be this size, maybe they're getting it from another supplier or not. I just know that it, they are like four times expensive. So I don't know, I'm just gonna put that out there. And my point is, well, it's a 60 pound fragrance. It's kind of, that's what's, I don't know, maybe they are, maybe they are not. I don't work for this company, so I have no idea. But I love this fragrance. I think it's, uh, the price is exceptional. I like the way it's recyclable. I like all these things about it. I hate the cap. As I said, you really should, they really should have gone there with it and spend a bit of money on like a, a metal cap or something or being unique and innovative as they're going on about all that stuff. But I like it. I, I think you get bored of it. It sort of smells really, really similar to kind of that DNA. It's just been recycled. It's kind of everywhere. It's a very, very nice DNA. Uh, it's very nice fragrance, but I think you would get bored of it. But I think it's a great signature fragrance. Sort of all occasions and all men, really. I think it's, it's very, very inoffensive and a very enjoyable, nice fragrance. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I think it's great. Wouldn't change it. But it's kind of, you know, it's not giving me that extra anything to make me think it's worth a nine or a 10. I think it's an eight. I think it's great for what it is. I can thoroughly recommend it. So I love that review. Thumbs up and subscribe for fascinating, interesting content, lots of moving hands and lots of fragrance views. I hope you're staying safe and well. See you soon.